Let's look at this old question, O and O5, paper 4, question 6. Define magnetic flux density, aya. Ah, By now, hopefully, you memorize already lah. Okay, F equals to B, I, L, sine, theta. You want to define B, right? So, you rearrange your F equals to I, L, sine, theta. Make sure you mention all these terms, F, I, L, theta. So, what well, you can say, force per unit length, F over L. Force on what ah? Oh, acting on conductor. So, you say acting on a straight conductor carrying... 1 amp of current. Sometimes you'll see them say per unit current, also can la. 1 amp of current, oh, they must mention theta also. What's the angle? So this conductor has to be having a current uh, normal to the B field. So that's how we define it la. Normal means perpendicular. Normal is perpendicular to B field or magnetic field. 3 marks as usual. Force per unit length. Mm, straight current carrying 1 amp. A straight conductor carrying one of current and normal to the B field. So this one is M1, A1, A1. Please remember how to define your definitions. Free marks. Next. Aha, here we come to the coil. Looks very familiar. We discussed this earlier. A flat coil has N turns of wire and has area A. The coil is placed so that its plane is at an angle. Wow, this one going to rotate again, I miss. No, no, we see how. La. Okay, so... What's changing? State, Far oh, State Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. So if you ever forget, remember the main idea is EMF induced is proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. N phi is the magnetic flux linkage. D, N phi dt means the rate of change of that function, phi. So we're going to say the induced EMF is proportional to what ah? Say the whole thing lah. To the rate of change. Oh, it's not appear so many times now. Change of, what's the N5? Magnetic flux linkage. Magnetic flux linkage. Woo! Two marks. Where does that come from? Induce EMF proportional to Real change of magnetic flux linkage. So this is how this particular masking grouped it together. M1A1. Okay, now we come to this part. The magnetic flux density in a coil is now made to vary as shown. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is changing here? You know what we always do with changing flux? The flux density, B, is changing. Maybe B is getting stronger. Maybe B is getting weaker, I don't know, but it's changing. So that's going to cause an induced EMF inside this coil. It's using the symbols A, B, N, and theta, making reference to the magnetic flux, derive an expression for magnetic flux linkage. So they're basically saying, phi equals to what? Give me an equation. So we know that this uh, magnetic flux is B dot A. And what is B? What is A again? Ah, B is magnetic field. What is A? A is the direction vector of this plane. So, something that sticks up perpendicular to that. Man, this is a very big pen. Okay, so that would be angle... What's the angle between those? In terms of theta? Mm, so let's write that down here. This would be BA sine theta as what we saw earlier. We derived it in the theory video. Oh, but magnetic flux linkage. Linkage. Oh, so we need to do flux linkage. Don't forget to multiply by the number of turns of coil. So NBA sine theta. Good reminders. So one mark comes if you know that the flux through a coil is BA sine theta. So this is for a coil. And then you know the total flux through the, all the coils, all together, n turns. This will be another B1, so flux linkage. Then comes the graph. Oh, man. Okay. So we have a B graph, how the magnetic flux density is changing. It's getting stronger, it's getting weaker uh, through this thing. And there's E, which is the induced EMF. And they ask us to sketch the variation of EMF induced in the coil. Oh, what? How to sketch? Stay calm. Remember your Faraday's law. They asked you this already. It means you're going to use this idea. So let's stay calm and write down Faraday's law to help us out here. 
So, Faraday's law, E proportional to uh, the rate of change. So, dn5. Wow, this suddenly changed color halfway. Interesting. Anyway, <laughs> I'll just keep it there then. So, what is the phi that is changing here? Is the number of coils changing? No. The coils are the same. What else is in phi? Let's write it out. So, d n I will be just right up here. Okay, okay, we write the whole thing. N B A sine theta. Sure, let's keep that. Mm, N is not changing. Is B changing? B is changing. Is A changing? No, the area is still the same area. Is the angle of the coil changing? No, it's fixed. Theta is just at that angle chilling. So all those are constants. You can take them out. N, A, sine, theta. All that's left is N, D, B, D, T. And that is changing in time, over time. That's why we have the graph. You see the graph? Got D, B, D, T, right? So we can simplify this whole idea to say the, 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 the induced EMF is proportional to D, B, D, T, which is also known as the gradient or the slope of your BT graph. This is very important. Can you arrive at this conclusion by yourself? Recognize Faraday's law and what does it really mean when you see a dBdt or d phi dt? Gradient. Oh, okay. So we look at the gradient first. Huh? We don't look down there yet. What's the gradient here? Huh? Got change meh? Gradient? No gradient war. <laughs> So here, there is no change. So it's zero. Yeah, let's just write it out. Uh, D, B, D, T is zero. No gradient. It's flat. No changing value. Would it suddenly increase? Oh, so this one is gradient is some positive value. Which means the induced EMF should be a positive value. Increasing my going up. Ma. Okay, lor. Then how about the other side? Now it's going down. There's a change in the B. So there's a change in the flux. So here we're going to say, I don't know how to write the other way now. So here's a gradient, but decreasing. And so there will be an EMF induced here as well. Okay, also got EMF. Last part, got change or not? No wall gradient, 0 dB, dt is 0. No change, flat graph. The value is not changing. Okay, so how do we translate that to our graph down here? Section by section. I'm going to zoom out so we can see the whole picture. Let's start off with the one where E is 0. Because that one is the easiest to draw. So the first one, here there's no change. So there's not going to be induced EMF. Last part, there's no change. Also, also not going to be induced EMF. In between, what happened now? You know what? If you want to be strict, you can kind of do Lenz Law too. E equals to negative dn phi dt. So if here you have a gradient that is increasing, means you have a negative EMF law. Okay, law. So we write a negative here. So you can draw something like this. To be honest, the EMF sign is kind of up to you to define, but let's just practice following Lenz law. And then, huh, the next part, do you think the gradient is the same or steeper? Should I just do this or is it going to be a different value? Look very carefully. In the same period of time, from here to here, you increase by this much. But then in part two, in the same amount of time, you decrease by double the amount almost. Eh? So the gradient is almost double as steep. So maybe you should put two times as steep. So maybe here. There we go. Okay, same period of time, oh, delta t here, here got delta t, delta t. But wow, one graph go up so much, the other one go down so much. So there's a difference there. Oh. So let's connect up the graph, draw a nice square graph. And yep, that's our answer. Wow, very cute. Eh? A bit spiky, spiky. Three marks for this, I believe. Where do the marks come from? Number one. If you draw a square square here and there and both sides got zero, okay, la, la, one mark for you. So zero elsewhere other than the two peaks in the middle. 
Then one mark comes if you know that they are in opposite directions for these two sections. Because one, the magnetic field increase, the other one decrease. So one is EMF negative, the other one positive. You can switch both, lah, also can, lah, as long as it's opposite direction. This particular mask scheme isn't too picky about that. Then the last one is if your second part here is almost roughly double the amplitude. Because there's a change that is much larger over there. So maybe down here is just negative um, 2 volts. Then here will be positive 4 volts. Something like that. Because there's a bigger change mark on this side of the gradient. See the slope much steeper. Go down so much in the same amount of short time. Okay. So make sure, this is very important, you know how to sketch graph. Because there's a lot of graph questions in this chapter. How do you think of rate of change? Burn this into your mind. Rate of change is gradient. Gradient, gradient, gradient. Gradient, gradient, gradient. Okay, so before we close off today, I just want to add on one little bit about Lenz Law. Because I know we talk about Lenz Law, but how do you actually... What does it actually mean? I mean, here is one example. Lah. Your gradient positive, but then you just negative your EMF. But if you want to look at the diagram, what's a way we can think of how Lenz Law is at work? What exactly is Lenz Law? We'll keep seeing Lenz Law more in the coming uh, parts, but think about this. When we say uh, the magnetic field is here, and you change the magnetic field strength, maybe let's say I increase. Suddenly, there will be extra, extra, extra line because the magnetic field become extra strong. During that moment of change, somebody is not happy. The coil is like, oh, what is this? Induce change. I need to oppose this change. Oppose the change. I need to get rid of this extra magnetic flux density. Okay, so remember, magnetic flux density has decreased in this case. So what the coil will do actually is oppose the change. So now there's, you know, B, there's more of this. As it is increasing, the coil will generate a current that will flow in this direction such that there is an opposing magnetic field from this coil that is now pointing in this direction. See, like that. How I know use the right hand grip rule. Oh. Remember how to use the right hand grip rule from the previous chapter if you have a coil, like that. What's the direction of the magnetic field? Down. So you're going to draw down like that. So now it's not a, not a circle anymore, it's a coil. Lah. So you got to think of your coil, oh, if you have a coil, current is flowing like this. And your magnetic field is pointing this way, using your right hand grip rule. So you see how this one oppose a change? Oh? When when this one, B, become more, the coil says, yeah, I don't like, why suddenly increase so much? Please decrease this, and then it fights that. So it creates a, its own magnetic field of this coil that opposes this change that just happened. So there is a, what you call this? There is a dB. Or change in B in this direction. So it becomes stronger. More lines. Cause says, nope, I'm going to oppose that. Different direction. So you have more practice thinking about this one in coils and how do you oppose the change? If the field is getting weaker, the coils is like, hey, we need a stronger field. Come on, let's bring on the field. And create a different field. So... Yep, hang, hang tight when you see more of these opposed to change ideas in the coming parts. But that's the main thing you need to know of Lenz Law. What happens if instead of increasing the B, I switch up stuff a bit? And I say, <laughs> instead of B increase, what if I make this B weaker? Oh, so suddenly the, the amount of flux going through this core has decreased. Flux decrease. The coil is not going to be happy and say, Hey, where do all the, 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 the flux lines go to? Excuse me, we want more flux. So, the, the coil will have a current such that a magnetic field of its own will generate in this direction to oppose the change. So now you have a change in this way. You kind of think of it this way, okay? It's getting weaker and weaker. Then now your coil will have this thing. So where will be the direction of current? Use your right hand grip rule. All your fingers will curl this way. 
So that means the coil will go have a current flowing in this direction. It's pretty cool when you think of it, it's just like, wow, how does this even work? There are some simulations that will show you how, why, why is there, what is going on? And it's quite fascinating to watch, but it's really hard to explain as well. And it's all mainly based on this idea. So you see the line, we look at it in the beginning, there's charges in the coil, everything is chill, except when you start to move and change the magnetic field, then you see the charges in here start to move. You're just like, wow, what is happening? So when they are moving charges, there's current. When there's current, means there's electricity. Okay. Another one which I thought was really cool to see is what really happens. It's actually a graph that you will see, which you will learn to draw in the coming case studies. And that is, now it's, I just draw the charges. I don't draw the wire already. How do you think the charges will move? When a magnet comes in. The magnet will cause some kind of changes. And you see how they rotate. It's just quite fascinating, you see? Just by a changing magnetic field, it causes charges to move. Wow. What is that? So, yes, you will learn more about how to think about coils like this and why is there this graph? What is this graph? You will see it in a past year. So stay tuned because you'll see more fun stuff coming your way. But that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next section.